Well, it is really, really good to see you. Uh, do I call you Barry or do I call you Pastor Jones? Which one's best? <laughs> Barry is great. Barry is great. Uh, my folks at the church sometimes call me Pastor Barry. I'm still getting accustomed to that. Just plain old Barry is really great. Okay, well, uh, I'll nickname you PB and J. You can use that <laughs> later if you haven't heard it. But uh, but Pastor Barry, I really appreciate you being here. Um, you are pastor of a, a fantastic church. Uh, I'll let you introduce yourself. But uh, thank you for thank you for being on this. And um, so, for those that don't know um, your church yourself, please uh, please introduce yourself. Yeah. So my name is Barry Jones. I'm the senior pastor at Irving Bible Church. Um, I have just been the senior pastor there for about a year. Um, prior to my becoming senior pastor, my predecessor, Andy McQuitty, was a pastor of that church for um, 31 years and is still with us as our pastor at large. I've served on staff of the church as a teaching pastor for about 12 or 13 years before then coming into that role as senior pastor. So um, I still feel like I'm kind of new to the job and now thrust into a whole new reality. So this is a, a crazy time, but it's been um, a, a really, I think, uh, already in some ways, enriching time for our community, even as we find ourselves in the midst of a, of a crisis. I can imagine um, in the role that you have, right, um, which is a very, very big role and demanding and uh, such a great leadership opportunity, uh, just doing that in the last year would be huge. And then faced with, you know, the, re the reason why we're doing these is just, you know, with COVID and the coronavirus. Um, so I can imagine that adds a whole nother layer. So yeah. um, it's trial by fire. And yeah. so with coronavirus and these last couple of weeks and just how the world has had to adapt and change. Um, from IBC standpoint, what are you guys seeing? How, how, are, how are things at IBC with the, the shelter in place? How are you guys yeah. doing? Yeah, we're, uh, I, you know, I think we're doing well. Um, we uh, very quickly made the decision we we're gonna close down our building. That happened before even the shelter in place order came down. And so we uh, immediately went into how do we shift what we're doing in terms of, of leading, guiding our people, connecting our people? How do we shift that into a kind of um, virtual church, virtual ministry? You know, we, we talk about the idea that church really isn't a building. It's a, it's a people. It's a people who have a building. And now we're in a situation where we don't have access to our building, but how do we keep the church together and connected keep those relationships strong. And so uh, we immediately shifted into uh, broadcasting our Sunday services uh, online. Um, I started two weeks ago, a daily morning devotional. We're kind of walking through the book of John and, and really with the desire for that was just a place where um, we were doing it on Facebook live. And so it's a place where our community can come together, connect, share prayer requests and just feel like, um, like we're, we're starting each day literally on the same page of, of looking at scripture together, being centered in the story of Jesus, allowing him to bring us a sense of calm and, and comfort in the midst of this. And then our pastors immediately went into the mode of saying, okay, how can we shift everything that we're doing um, into online ministry? And so they produced new ministry plans from student ministry, children's ministry, um, all the way on down. For us, some of our priorities were how do we make sure that um, the most vulnerable among us are taken care of? So we put together a, a quarantine care team that's able to help meet people's needs out there in the community. Um, we, uh, we also then wanted to say, how do we connect people who aren't connected in community? So recognizing that this is disorienting for all of us, but especially for those who don't have a sense of connection, a so strong support structure. And so we've created what we're calling virtual formation groups. Um, that can kind of walk together through this experience. Um, we wanted to uh, be accessible, the pastoral accessibility for people who have kind of soul care needs, people who are feeling the, the, um, the trauma of this experience and need to connect with a pastor. And so we have a platform where people can easily access setting up a time to spend time with a pastor. Um, and then we wanted to really lean into how can we uh, create spiritual growth resources for people in the midst of this, that recognizing that when our rhythms and our schedules all get disrupted, there's actually an opportunity for us to, to go deeper um, in our spiritual lives. And, and in some sense, we, we need that right now. So things like our online worship services, our uh, online morning devotionals, we did a kind of online prayer experience. Um, 
we got Holy Week coming up. And so we're putting out resources that are going to be part of that. Uh, the Holy Week experience that'll be, you know, kind of virtually mediated through technology. So, um, yeah, I, I, I've been so uh, grateful for the amazing team of people that I have around me that have just stepped up and shown the kind of swift and, and um, creative leadership to help guide our people through this. And so despite the fact that we got a lot of folks that are struggling emotionally, financially, physically, um, I think we've got a really beautiful uh, sense of community walking together through this, through this experience. Well, from my, from my experience with, uh, with your church, and that experience is through others that go to your church and talk, and talk about the church. I mean, the community piece at IBC always seems to be amazing. Mm -hmm. um, just a quick question just about kind of operations of what you yeah. guys are doing. Um, how much was IBC um, broadcasting? Um, are you now a hundred percent versus you were zero before, or was it like 50, is it, was it 50, 50? Like how much have you yeah. guys had to adapt? So thankfully we had some good infrastructure in place. We have for the last few years, um, live streamed our services, um, through our website. And then maybe a year or a little more than that ago, we began live streaming our services on Facebook live. We never promoted those. We never pushed it to say, you know, here's a, we wanted to be a supplement, but we didn't want it actually to detract from embodied community showing up together in the room. But for those folks who are ill or those folks who are traveling or as a way to, for new folks to kind of learn about IBC and connect with IBC, we put those things out there. But what that meant is that we then had the infrastructure in place that we could fairly quickly shift into this kind of online uh, digital expression of church. Um, and we had some good pieces in place. Now, when we went to the shelter in place order that added a whole new layer of complexity to it for us, because right. the first couple of weeks when we shut down our building, um, we were still able to uh, record to broadcast our worship services from the worship center. So it was just kind of a skeleton crew of us, but they're in the worship center doing the, doing the um, worship experience. When we went to shelter in place, we made the decision to do all of that from home. Even though within the shelter in place order, there's provision for churches to still have a crew of people showing up in the building for the sake of those broadcasts. We felt like for a couple of reasons. One, we wanted to, we wanted to set an example. We wanted to send the message to the community like this is serious and, right, and we right. should all take it very seriously. And so we're taking it very seriously. Um, we're going to do this all from home, even though it's not the kind of production quality that we might want to have. We're going to do it from home. The other thing is we didn't want to put anybody on our team in a position where they felt like they had to kind of take one for the team and show up even if they felt uncomfortable. For example, our, our family even is a three generation household. My mother lives with us. And so, um, you know, she's in the, in the category of folks that are particularly vulnerable yeah, to this. And so absolutely. we felt like in the, in the name of an abundance of caution, let's shift to do all this at home. So I'm filming a sermon at my house and our worship leaders are filming the, met, the, the worship there. We've got somebody doing announcements and putting those pieces together. We've got a, an amazing tech uh, crew that's just worked so hard to be able to put that together and get it out to our people. And there's just been this deep sense, I think, of gratitude that we've seen from our folks to say, thank you for all the effort, the energy that's going into keeping us connected, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus Kind of moving forward even in the midst of this and what's been amazing to see is um if you just look at the number of people that are joining us and a part of our services online we're actually seeing a, a, a an increased attendance compared to That's the awesome. number of people that we had in the room and so i think the accessibility of it i think the sense of crisis that maybe awakens people to a, a sense of spiritual need um that uh that you got folks that are that are joining in and listening to the messages so that I think there really is an opportunity where, where we have a chance to, um, to reach people that we might not otherwise have been able to reach and to bless people that we might not otherwise have been able to bless through this, this very difficult set of circumstances. Well, it's a real, you know, it's uh, you know, uh, necessity is the mother of all invention. Mm -hmm. Scarcity leads to amazing innovation. I mean, all those things that, uh, um, that, that we are having to force to figure out. Um, well, maybe in the next, uh, just the next minute or so before we wrap up, um, yeah. I'd be interested from your perspective, you know, what, there's, there, 
there's so much conversation around the negativity and what's bad and, and, and all of that. And there's plenty of places to go get that. I'm really interested from your perspective, what are some of the blessings? What are some of the yeah. good that you've particularly seen uh, in the community due to this coronavirus pandemic? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the apostle Paul says that we're to make the most of every opportunity. And even within this crisis, I think there is an opportunity, um, an opportunity for the church to demonstrate its true character. Um, and uh, I hope that we'll come out of this and see that the church has, has stepped up to the task, not just our church, but the church. Um, that I think even historically, St. Cyprian back in the third century was a Christian leader during the time the plague swept through the Roman Empire. And that plague is actually referred to as St. Cyprian's plague because of the way that the church stepped up and loved their neighbors as themselves. And so we're really seeing this as an opportunity for us as a community, us as people to step up and to, to deepen our sense of sacrificial love to the community around us. Um, and that's just beginning right now. It's, it's happening as we're all kind of distributed and sheltered in place. It's going to only increase as we find ourselves able to come out of this, but sort of putting our lives back together. And so many people that, are going to be affected emotionally, physically, uh, economically through this. And so there's a real opportunity for the church to, to love our neighbors in this. I think there's also an opportunity for us to deepen um, our, our spiritual lives that because of the fact that our normal rhythms and routines are disrupted and the things that we spend our lives and our time doing, um, some of those things are off the table for us right now. Like, let's take advantage of this, of this moment that when our grandchildren ask us, what were we doing? during COVID-19, that we won't just say we were binge watching Netflix or, right, but that we would say, I took that opportunity to, to really invest in my relationships and my family and invest in my spiritual life and, and to, to grow like I never had before. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Well, um, Pastor Barry, for those that, uh, that haven't you know, been to your website or Facebook, uh, might be interested in, in uh, understanding what you guys are doing to serve others. How do they, how do they yeah. find you? Yeah, so our website is irvingbible.org. You can find our, our worship services um, live streamed there. But I want to especially point to um, the, the page on our website that's irvingbible.org slash care. That's the place where we're making um, available to people how we can care for others. So how to connect with a pastor if you need some spiritual counsel, how to make us aware of a material need that you have that we can help address, as well as how people can get involved in caring for the community around them. And so we've got a number of opportunities there for ways in which we're trying to show care to our community. We're gonna be adopting Medical City Las Colinas as a as a, a group of people that are on the front lines of, of facing this crisis where we can pray for them and support them and show love to them. Um, we're going to be doing some food distribution out of our parking lot. So there's opportunities that we have to really um, uh, demonstrate that sacrificial love to our community. And you can find out more about both how to receive care as well as how to engage in care at irvingbible.org slash care. That's fantastic. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you for being, uh, uh, thank you for the, the work that, that, that you do, your ministry, for being a, a, just a great pillar um, in uh, not only the Capel community, but the community at large as well. So I really appreciate yeah. that. Uh, Thank thanks you so for your leadership. Time. And um, mm -hmm. I really appreciate you spending a few, time, a few minutes with us um, uh, having this conversation. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure to be a part of it. So thanks for inviting me. You got it. And shout out to my friend, Angela Lancaster, for the introduction. Um, so Absolutely. she gets some credit for that. All right, Absolutely. Pastor Barry, you have a fantastic day. Hey, thanks. You too.